Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. On today's episode, we're going to talk about fungally dominated composts and some of the product claims that have been made. Generally, on popular gardening platforms, there seems to be this differentiation between fungally dominated and bacterial dominated composts. And basically, what this is is this has to do with the feedstocks that you use and the process that they have to go through in order to become the end product. For more information on what a fungally dominated compost is or a bacterially dominated compost is, I'm going to put a link at the end of this video and in the description below to Patrick Dolan from One Yard Revolution's episode from today where he goes into greater detail. The first claim is that when you grow in fungally dominated composts, your products will be supersized. Now when you have a plant in ideal conditions that includes nutrients, water, sun, and temperature, they're going to get closer to their genetic potential and that will make them as big as they're going to be. The trials this year are a great example of this. In the control bed and in the other beds, the soil had sufficient nutrients, actually quite a surplus of nutrients, so they all grew very, very well. But there wasn't a statistical difference between the harvests or the yields in any of the beds because there was this surplus. So essentially what this means is even in the best conditions, if you add a product like this, the, the plants are only going to hit their genetic potential. They, there's nothing that's going to mutate them to make them, you know, super big or anything like that. They're going to probably stay within that genetic potential. They may get maybe slightly closer, but that's going to be really hard to notice. So if your plants have sufficient nutrients and the right environmental conditions, the addition of any fungi in surplus is not going to supersize them. Fungi play a key role in the soil. Not only do they break down more complex organic materials that bacteria can't, they form what's called a mycorrhizal relationship between plant roots and themselves. They mine hard to get nutrients in water and in return they get sugar from the plants. So having more fungi in the soil is better, right? Well this is the second claim that I'd like to talk to you about. So let's take a look at the two ecological functions that fungi provide our garden plants. The first is breaking down more complex organic material. Now this is a good thing. So yes, having a few more fungi in there is going to speed this process along. The second is that mycorrhizal relationship we just spoke about. Having more fungi and more fungi spores in the soil will have a greater chance of allowing you to create that relationship with the plants further benefiting both the fungi and the plant itself. So yes, having more fungi in the soil will in fact benefit your plants because not only will they make more nutrients available, they'll create these beneficial relationships in, with your plants, further enhancing both their vigor and their ability to fight diseases. Often, fungally dominated compost has a lower pH than bacterially dominated compost. Can this hurt your soil? Well, it's not really product claim, but let's go into it anyways. Most soils have what's called a buffering capacity. This has developed over millions of years to maintain a fairly steady pH in the soil. So much so that a lot of the beneficial microbes in the soil cannot tolerate large swings in the pH because the, the habitat they've always lived in has been very, very steady. Most rainwater has a pH of about 6. What happens is when the rain comes down, it comes in contact with carbon dioxide. When the carbon dioxide dissolves into the water, it creates what's called carbonic acid, effectively going from a 7 to a 6, making that water slightly acidic. So in the absence of other pollutants, you'd think this rain at a pH of 6 would make all the soils around it about a, a pH of 6. That's in fact incorrect. What happens in the soil itself is in the parent material, that's the rock underneath that's slowly degrading, what happens is there's elements in there that come up. When this acidic water comes down into it, they in fact neutralize each other, leaving the pH generally around 7. Or the native soil, whatever the native soil's pH is, it effectively neutralizes it and maintains that pH itself. So the addition of the fungally dominated compost, it may be in fact a lower pH, even down to 5.5 I've read, it's not going to effectively change because that soil is going to buffer it and it's going to bring it back to what the surrounding soil's pH is. So you don't really have to worry about adding 
fungally dominated compost or creating your own on site because that pH is either going to change extremely gradually or it's going to buffer out right away. So there are plenty of organic products that are produced with fungi in them. And one of the product claims here is that they come with more fungi in them. So that would help, right? We've, we've just spoken about the fact that more fungi in the soil is better. So why not buy a product that will add more fungi to your soil? Unfortunately, these products are often shipped in plastic bags of small volume. Fungi definitely need oxygen in order to survive. What happens here is the plastic prevents new oxygen from entering into the product itself. And because they're small volume, they're typically a allowed to change temperatures quite quickly, often getting quite hot. Effectively what this does is it kills most everything that's in there. So in most cases, when you get that product home, most of the fungi are in fact dead already. So you're either adding none at all, or even if some are, have made it, it's going to be a negligible increase. If you can get these products from the manufacturer themselves, you have a better chance of having spores in there. However, the growth phase of fungi is very, very prone to mechanical death. What that means is you actually transporting it will likely kill the ones that are alive, but fresh from the producer, you may have more spores in there. But don't worry, the natural colonization of the fungi will happen over time. And the addition of this compost is actually a good thing and can bring other benefits to it just not live spores. The fifth and final claim I'd like to discuss with you today is the claim that these products come with more humus, in fact in the product, than a bacterially dominated compost product. Humus is all of the organic material that is not currently in a plant or in a plant's form. So this is usually the dead and decaying material. The addition of humus in the soil helps alleviate compaction, allowing more oxygen and water into the matrix. It also has the ability to hold more nutrients in place and provides habitat for beneficial organisms. So the addition of humus into your garden soil, say for instance mine, is probably going to be negligible because we already have all of those functions. But if you have a poor or compact soil, the addition of humus can have great impacts in your garden. The introduction of compost is not, though, going to have an immediate result. Generally, this takes time. The nutrients must accumulate, the bacteria must uh, colonize, and this usually takes, under ideal conditions, about six months. So be patient when you're adding this. The cultivation of beneficial organisms, such as bacteria and fungi in your garden, is extremely important in allowing your plants to hit their maximum genetic potential. The addition of these composts is a great way to start. However, you can do it much more cost effectively by adding a coarse woody mulch. This is leaves and wood chips. That will help promote the development of fungi in your soil and definitely help your plants reach their genetic potential. As I mentioned earlier, Patrick Dollum from One Yard Revolution has posted a video today I think you'll be interested in. He discusses the differences between bacterially dominated compost and fungally dominated compost, how you can build your own, and how you can increase the populations of beneficial fungi and bacteria in your own garden at little to no cost. Thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.